Hey, hey, friends, welcome back to Thursday Thoughts with Rito. I'm glad you're here. I was bummed we were dealing with some family sickness again last week, and so I did not get to post one of these little videos, but I'm back, baby. Woohoo! <laughs> and I'm glad you're here. Thank you for stopping in to check out what the Lord has laid on my heart today. I hope, I hope it speaks to you. I hope that God encourages you uh, to continue walking through whatever you're walking through right now. So I was thinking about uh, the time that Jesus took Peter, James, and John up to the top of a tall mountain. It's in all three of the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Uh, I am kind of framing my reference from Matthew chapter 17, if you want to go check it out. It's called the Transfiguration of Jesus. So while they're up on top of this mountain, all of a sudden, Jesus is shining in his heavenly glory. And they, I think they see Jesus in, in just a glimpse of heaven. And as they're in awe, there's Moses and Elijah standing there talking to Jesus, and they're glowing as in their heavenly glory as well. I can't imagine what that would have looked like. I, Of course, the disciples were terrified, fell on their face or whatever, but um, Peter, lovable, well-intended, bit of a buffoon Peter, goes, oh, this is great, it's, uh, it's so good that we're here. <laughs> He's probably from New Jersey, right? So it's so good that we're here. Let me let me build some shelters for you guys, and we'll we'll just stay here. It'll be perfect. <laughs> so then a cloud comes and envelops Jesus and Moses and Elijah, and they hear the voice of God say, "This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him." Then the cloud is gone. Moses and Elijah are gone, and Jesus is back to normal. Here's the thing. So Peter was ready to stay there in that mountaintop experience, both literal and figurative, mountaintop experience, right? They saw Jesus in his full glory as if the kingdom of God were fully, fully here on earth. What an amazing experience. Of course he wanted to stay there. And don't we do that? You and I, don't we do that? Those mountaintop experiences where it just seems like the, the line between heaven and earth, uh, maybe even all but disappears. It's just like God is so close, we can almost touch him. Those moments are so special. But the thing is, guys, we're not meant to stay on the mountain. Just like Jesus didn't need shelters built for him and Moses and Elijah, neither are we supposed to live on those mountaintop experiences. Do you know what Jesus did right after that? They marched down that mountain, and they basically made a beeline for Jerusalem, where Jesus was going to be betrayed, beaten, and tortured to death. I wonder who that mountaintop experience was fully for. Was it for Jesus? Was it God reminding Jesus of who he is as he was getting ready to go into that final leg of this journey? Was it for the disciples to show them ahead of time the, the fullness of Jesus' glory so that they could have hope even in the worst of times? I'm not sure. But what I do think is that you and I get those mountaintop experiences. We get glimpses of the fullness of God's reality and presence in our lives. And I think rather than staying there, they're meant to carry us through the valleys that we have to walk through. Because life is full of valleys. And that's okay. But those mountaintop experiences, we can look back. We can remember those times when God was so so close and we can be encouraged to keep on walking through the valley to keep on pursuing a closer relationship with god to keep on hoping and trusting even when our circumstances scream at us not to so friends this day wherever you are whether you're on the mountain whether you're in the valley or somewhere in between continue to walk in the light of jesus and be the light to the world around you